Hi, welcome to the second video of a drop of Excel. For anyone who hasn't seen the first video, just as a quick brief, this is a part of a 12 video series called a drop of Excel. So go ahead, look at the introduction first and then the first video and then come here. Okay, so for those of you who have completed the first video, let's continue. Now we are going to learn about data types and data structure. So the first thing that we will learn is three types of data, right? Whenever you look at a data set, please try to observe that you generally would have numbers, text, or dates. You would have numbers, text, or dates, right? Anything which is a combination of text and numbers is also text, essentially. You may also have a column of time. Right. So we can call this as date and time. It's the same format, date and time. Anything particularly that has a number only will be a number, otherwise text and dates. Right. So these are the three types of data that we are going to focus on. The first one being a number. So what I want you to do is try it in a separate Excel file. Just extend the width of a column and type in one, two, three, enter. Basically what we have done is we've entered a number. Now when you enter a number, by default, you should observe that the alignment of the number goes to the right side. It becomes a right aligned. So typically numbers are right aligned. This is what we need to remember here. Similarly, if you type any text, let's say you wrote A, B, C, or you wrote X, Y, Z, anything that you particularly write like this, or even if you type a number and a text, let's say I write C14, all this becomes left aligned. So text is left aligned. Also remember one thing very, very surely in your mind, Anything that is left aligned by default is text. Please keep this as a rule in your mind. By default, if anything is left aligned, it is always text. Yeah. Now we're going to enter today's date or any date for that matter. So let me enter a date, let's say 31st March 2020. When I enter that date, it went to the right side. For some of you, when you enter this date, it may go to the left side. So the question is, why would that happen? For some of you, it will go to the right side. For some of you, it will go to the left side. Why would something like that happen? So if I enter this date in the other manner, this goes to the left. The reason is my computer is DDMMYY and not MMDDYY. All right. So if you observe here, this is right aligned. This is left aligned. Correct. So dates are always right aligned. We need to remember this. Dates are always right aligned. So if this goes to the left, what does it mean? Let's follow the golden rule. Anything that is left aligned by default is text. So typically this is text and this is a date. If you want me to prove it to you, just observe carefully. I'm going to put a formula. I know we've not started formulas yet, but I'm just going to put a formula for you to understand. If I select this and try to add one, I should get the next available date, right? So I will get first April year. But if I try to do the same thing here, I will get an error. When I get this error, it means that this particular formula was not able to identify this as a date. It was not able to do that function of adding one day to the date. Thus, we've understood that how dates perform, how text performs, how numbers perform. One more example I'll just quickly give you. If I enter a date 4-5-2020 and 5-4-2020, right? Now it is very difficult for you to understand whether it is 4th May or 5th April. Which one is 4th May, which one is 5th April. So there is a quick trick for this. What we can do is we can select this and press Control Shift 
3 on the keyboard. Control Shift 3. When you do that, you will realize that the date format has automatically become in a way that you are able to see the spelling of the month, a three digit spelling, a three letter spelling of the month. So this eases out any kind of confusions, whether it is 4th May, 5th April, whatever it is. All right. Moving on. The next thing that we are going to learn is autofill. So I'm going to go to 2.2. Now I've written certain scenarios where you would want to do this. So what is autofill first of all? When you're trying to copy some data below, right? So if I have this number one, now for me to copy this data below, one option is I copy and I paste control C and control V, right? That is the simple way to copy. But I'm not looking at essentially copying, I'm looking at filling the following cells, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mouse cursor to the bottom right where I see a small bubble. So I'm going to zoom in a little and I see that small bubble, right? I'm going to take my cursor there. Let me zoom out again. I'm going to take my cursor there, click, keep it clicked and drag down. When I do that, because I only had a single number one, I get ones. But if I had two numbers in sequence, if I select both and I click and drag down, what I get is a sequence of numbers. If I take one and three and I drag down, what I get is odd numbers. So it understands that it was alternating numbers and hence it brought that series out. Similarly for even numbers, or even if you put one and five, then if there's a difference of four, right? So you will get one, five, nine, and so on. Next. Now let's look at text. We saw numbers, let's look at text. If I have ABC, and if I try to drag this down, I will get all ABCs. If I have two texts, and if I try to drag this down, I will not get in sequence. I will always get it repeated. In text, you will never get a sequence automatically. It will always repeat down. Is that clear? Similarly, now let's look at dates. So if I take a single date, now please observe carefully. If I take a single date and try to drag it down, I still get a sequence. Even if I take a single date, unlike numbers, right? So if I don't want to do that, Ideal is you just copy and paste it down or while you drag, you don't drag using the left click of the mouse, you drag using the right click of the mouse and then you will get this kind of an option where you can say instead of filling series, you copy my cells. I would urge you to little rewind the video and try this out yourself. Instead of left click, do the right click and drag it down. All right. Now, if I have two dates in sequence, obviously I'm going to get them in sequence. But again, if I want to copy them down, I don't want it to drag it down. I'm going to right click, drag it and say copy cells. This also applies to numbers. So if here also I wanted one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and not one, two, three, four, five, six. I could have done it with a right click. So if I right click and I say copy cells, it works. Last thing, if I have, let's say two Tuesday dates, this is Tuesday as an example. If I have any two dates and if I try to copy it down, I will get all the Tuesdays. Right? So go ahead, explore the three types of data very, very clearly. Get them in your head very clearly because Whatever you will learn further is going to depend on these fundamental basics of Excel. If these go wrong in your mind, you will not be able to follow the way you should be and your grasping will be a little slower comparatively. So I would urge you get these fundamentals very clearly. Try this in your own Excel files and then move ahead. All right. Now we'll look at 10 questions to ask ourselves. So when I say 10 questions, these 10 questions are related to the data structure. So how should my data structure be? These questions are related to that. All right. So 
let's explore one question at a time and we'll go a little slow so that we are able to understand every point the first first question is does each of my column have a heading okay so this is my data okay this is some sample data so does each of my column have a heading so the answer is yes each of my column has a heading and it must have a heading all right so the reason that i have tried to put this in terms of questions is whenever you have your data set ask these questions to yourself and get your answers all right every column must have a header second is do you have any blank headings so the answer is that you should not have any blank headings ideally so here in this case if you observe yes there is a blank heading so this is wrong right ideally this is the right kind of data structure so this heading should not be blank moving on do i have any duplicate name headings i'm just going to zoom out a little so that you see the entire data do i have any duplicate name headings so here if you observe what has happened is that you have tried to make two rows of headings because of which three headings have become the same name so excel is not going to understand these as headings because this is the first row of the data set right so it's going to understand these are the headings now look wise it feels that okay this is one this is one this is one but essentially this is the name of the heading so there is a duplication happening in the name of the headings this should not happen how to avoid this so you should not have your data like this you can split it as subject and score and increase the number of rows in the data this will be very very useful even when you look at creating reports using pivot tables or when you're importing this data into some other system or even you're using this data with some other data this structure is very very important right so we are going to talk about this vertical versus horizontal structure also in a question but just try to remember do not have data like this split it into two columns as simple as that right and more importantly no duplication in headings moving on are any of my headings in merge cells so similarly what we saw here also you see that there is first of all double headings plus there is duplicate headings plus there are merging happening absolutely wrong right so this should not happen this structure is completely wrong what you should do is you should split it now because you have two tests you say test number as a column and then you put your score make sense moving on do you have any formulas in your headings do any of my headings have a formula now let's take this example where i have 2018 data then i want 2019 and 2020 data so typically what you would do is you would put a formula like this equal to that plus 1 and that will become 2019 and this will become 2020 right now this is wrong you should not have any formula in your headings so you should have entered it as 2018 2019 2020 2020 moving on does any column in my headings have more than one meaning right so let's look at this data here you see that in the city it is written mumbai comma maharashtra now this particular column has actually two meanings one is a city and one is a state this is not right you should not have data like this so whenever you have data like this split it into two which is city and state please remember this i see this very very often happening this is not right at all right similarly does any column have more than one data type now look at this column now what we have done is in score we've put physics 79 chemistry 89 and biology 65 this is again not right you should have it as two separate columns call it one as subject and one as score making sense now comes a very very important one where i am asking you do i have sub subtotals within my data so ask yourself do you have subtotals within your data 
if you look at this data this has a 233 and a 256 subtotal now localize this looks fine right but i have created these formulas right so what will happen is whenever i try to create a report out of this data these two numbers will also get utilized in the reports and my total numbers will go completely berserk similarly i will not be able to filter this data sort this data nothing so this is not the right way to do it you want a bifurcation of each student you use it and make it in a report right you will learn pivot tables in the last 12th video at that time you will understand how to use pivot tables to come up with these reports but do not create these subtotals within your data moving on question 9 have i applied any formatting in the data to indicate something so let's look at this data what does this mean that i want to give particular grades right now looking at this i know that okay green seems a higher grade than the yellow and then the red but what is the grade i have no idea so if i send this data to somebody else and they did not understand that this is for the grade they would not know what is the significance of this formatting right so rather you make it as a column and enter the grade and then send it to somebody or even utilize it that way so when you yourself open this file after let's say three months you're not confused what these colors were for all right the last one and the very very important one which i see a lot of people messing up so please observe this very very carefully this may look tedious to do but it's very very effective if you do it the right way is my data growing horizontally instead of vertically so now let's look at this i have a student's data who has given four tests right of a subject physics now when i look at this i do not know first of all if it is of physics or what is it plus i have given four tests what if i give 40 tests i'll have to increase 36 more columns of data right so whatever it is, it is impossible to analyze this data if you have data of let's say 1000 students versus so many columns. It is extremely, extremely difficult and there is no way to automate except using very, very complex formulas, right? So if you want reports to come out very easily, what you need to do is put the subject name, put the test number and put the score. So let's say if you had 40 tests, you would have 40 rows for each student instead of having 40 columns so this way your data is growing vertically and not horizontally this is a very very important rule please remember this and only then move on to creating your data structures so the next time that you create any new data structure ensure that you ask yourself these 10 questions keep this sheet with you i will put a link i have put a link of this file in the description below you can download this file from that and keep it with you handy so that whenever you get a new structure you create a new structure ensure that these 10 rules are followed you ask yourself these 10 questions correct the data structure and only then start working on it so with that we are done with data types in data structure i would urge you to go to the next video and continue learning there are total 12 videos please do not stop anywhere you can ask any kind of questions related to the video in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to help. If there is any doubt, if there is any doubt, please, please enter comments below. If you have any doubts in this video, please enter your questions as comments in the section below. If you like the content, if you've learned something new, please hit like, please share it with your friends and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Looking forward to see you in the next video.